Ah, something from the lab. This is the Bodum pour-over coffee maker in the one liter size. It's a handsome gizmo, I think. Our question today is, could this be an economical substitute for my favorite pour-over gadget, the Hario V60? Bodum says it has, quote, a fine mesh stainless steel filter that eliminates the need for paper filters. With a lower initial cost and no filters to buy, I'm willing to cut the Bodum a little slack. Is it good enough to replace the Chemex or the V60? Let's put her to the test, shall we? Oh my god. It's like a miracle. There's a lot of glass here. You can think of it as a heat sink, so pre-treatment with boiling water will be necessary. Now, I never weigh anything except the dose of coffee going in. This is 50 grams. Everything else I eyeball. I add water for the bloom or pre-infusion until it looks like there's enough. Coffee is variable. The density, roast level, grit size, and freshness all affect how it will interact with water. So instead of applying a single recipe to everything you brew, I'd encourage you to get involved and learn to read the signs. Sure, you need experience and time to dial things in, but what's your hurry? Most people drink coffee every day, so you'll catch on soon enough. I fill the pouring kettle with just boiled water from my electric kettle. This drops the temperature to around 96 or 97 degrees Celsius, or 205 to 207 degrees Fahrenheit. With a brewing ratio of 10 or 12 to 1, this will put your peak slurry temperature at around 90 degrees Celsius, or 195 degrees Fahrenheit, which is ideal. I formed a well in the center so that the water will be roughly the same distance from all of the coffee. When you use paper, you can root around with a spoon to make sure that all of the coffee gets wet quickly, but here, disturbing it would allow fines to pass through the screen, so we won't touch the coffee bed. Regardless of your pour-over device, never skip this pre-infusion step. It lets CO2 evolve and get out of the way while the hot water begins to dissolve soluble solids for better extraction. A steady center pour is crucial when you use metal. Paper filters offer flow resistance, which deflects water, letting you rinse coffee particles down the side. But a metal screen lets water fall straight through, bypassing the coffee entirely. The coffee bed provides our only flow resistance, another reason why we mustn't disturb it. Let me illustrate. Here you can see water passing through the screen effortlessly. None collects at the bottom. But if we put in a paper filter, the water is deflected, and most of it collects at the bottom where it belongs. We are often warned never to rinse down the inside surface, but that's merely a popular superstition. You needn't be afraid. But if you have a habit of washing coffee down the paper, you'll need to break it if you switch to metal. You simply can't rinse the sides of a metal filter. You'll have to use a spoon instead. Scoop around, then stir gently but not deeply. Notice that the spoon's depth is quite shallow here. There's a bed of coffee below and you mustn't disturb it. Do this only once. The coffee needs to settle so that water can pass through the bed at an even rate and extract properly. Again, you want a steady center pour. I stop pouring when I reckon the brewed coffee will be about 10 times the dry. In other words, 50 grams of dry coffee in, 500 milliliters of brewed coffee out. 100 grams in, 1 liter out. Like that. This brew took 5 minutes. That was slow, and it might produce a cup that's more like immersion than pour over, but we'll see. The bed of coffee is nice and even. This tells us that the pouring went well. Grabbing this is not fun. The insulating collar protects about half of my hand. It's not painful, it's just disappointing. It spoils some of the pleasure of using a handsome gadget like this. I don't see any sediment, so that's promising. Let's try it. I'll spare you the noise. The taste is very much like French press coffee. There's a heavier mouthfeel with some oily richness. It's in no way unpleasant, but it's quite different from paper filtered coffee. And I spoke too soon.
there's a lot of sediment here. Despite careful grinding and pouring, quite a bit of powder found its way into the carafe. Apparently, it passes through the screen easily. A burr grinder will not solve this problem. It will make less powder than a blade grinder, but it won't make none, and you need none. The only way around it would be to sieve the coffee, and I haven't got time. I might try it once as an academic exercise, but regularly? Not a chance. Pouring is a bit awkward. And now the glass looks dirty. Look at that oil slick. If I were serving guests and wanted to make a second batch, I'd have to wash it. Cleaning it isn't trivial. You can't reach inside with a sponge. You need to use one of these, with hot water and detergent. Seriously, no thanks. Let's go to the V60, our control device. I always recommend using the plastic funnel and the thin glass carafe because they don't require preheating. When I say that the V60 is good, I'm talking about this, the filter paper. This is where it all happens. The device only has to be adequate. That is, it mustn't absorb too much heat or obstruct the flow, and it should allow for good technique. It's your job to ensure that all of the coffee gets wet as soon as possible, which means you ought to dig down and excavate the bed during the pre-infusion, as Scott Rail urges. Second, you mustn't disturb the bed after the bloom phase, although shallow stirring is fine. Third, you have to regulate the slurry temperature by pouring correctly. I poured continuously using the metal filter, but with paper, a pulsed pour is fine so long as you don't leave coffee on the filter above the water line. The paper influences two important factors. First, the speed of the brew. A short dwell time won't fully extract the desirable flavor compounds, while a long contact period will extract unpleasant ones. There's a sweet spot of three to four minutes. Another factor is which substances the paper absorbs. Different filters will let different flavor compounds pass. That was around three and a half minutes, which I consider ideal. All right, let's try it. The flavor is exactly what Hario is known for. You taste all of the elements you want to taste and none of the elements that you don't want to taste. There's no sediment at all. The coffee is crystal clear with no greasy residue. I've emptied the carafe and rinsed it with cool tap water. As you can see, it's clean enough for another round without washing. Now, I enjoy all kinds of coffee. I love my French press, espresso, AeroPress, mocha pot, you name it, it's all great. But if I were forced to choose only one brewing method for the rest of my life, it would be the V60 without a doubt. The Bodum pour over gadget is pretty much a French press, which is hardly surprising considering who makes it. Bodum's claim that its metal screen eliminates the need for paper filters is not supported by the facts. The French press is easier to clean, it's less awkward to pour, and it's good looking. I can't recommend the Bodum pour over device. The French press is better in several practical ways, while the coffee it brews is virtually the same. But can we mod the Bodum pour over brewer to get better coffee out of it? Well, of course we can. In fact, it's dead easy. Voila! Well, that's all for today. In my next few videos, I'll be covering the mocha pot again. I also plan to compare the two dominant immersion devices, the French press and the Arab press. So keep in touch. Cheers.